Good afternoon class. Today we're going to work on using the sprite batch and its ability to take a matrix, a transformation matrix, and use that uh, to actually set up parallax scrolling in the game. So the game we're going to start with is this simple little helicopter simulator where we can fly a helicopter around a scene. And this background you see is actually made up of three separate textures. There's a foreground, a midground, and a background. And we're going to actually add scrolling, and then we're going to turn that into parallax scrolling. So the first thing we need to do uh, anytime we're going to set up uh, this kind of parallax scrolling is we need to um, figure out how far we need to scroll the world. So we basically need to come up with an offset vector. And that's going to be based on our player class, which has a position vector which tells us where, where it is in the world. So we have this exposed through this public getter. So in our parallax scrolling game, if we scroll down to our draw method is where we're going to do this calculation. And we're going to calculate our offset vector. And this would basically be a value between, uh, or it, it corresponds to the position the player's in, minus some amount of offset we want to use to keep um, the helicopter, the player, towards the middle of the world. And this can be, a t we can actually use both elements of the vector, or if we only want to scroll in one direction, uh, then we could just use one element of the vector. And that's actually what we're going to do here. Uh, so I'm going to create a... Uh, vector2 offset and set that equal to a new vector2 uh, which is going to be our offset into this world and let's say maybe we want our helicopter to be maybe about halfway across the screen so 300 and then we're not going to offset in the y direction so I'm just going to leave that as a, a zero for now and then we need to take that offset and we want to subtract from it the player position. But in this case, because I'm only wanting to scroll in the x direction, I'm going to specifically limit this uh, to the x value. And actually, let's just throw this in here, since we're going to do it this way. So we'll move it up there, dot position, dot x. So this vector, this offset vector, is just going to be uh, 300 pixels into the screen less the current player's position and that's going to be where the edge of our uh, camera should be. And then we can go ahead and apply this. So in our sprite batch begin there are a number of arguments that we can pick and you can see they're all listed here. Now we can also, uh, because these are all have default values, we can actually uh, just specify which one we want to apply, which transform matrix is the very last one, by using its name followed by a colon. This is a, a standard C-sharp kind of thing. And we want to provide a transformation matrix, which is going to translate by this offset vector, which is why we need it to be a vector, not just a single value. And we get a matrix from uh, one of the operations we've looked at um, and we're going to use matrix.create translation and this takes a position vector which is why we calculated well actually in this case I guess we could do a float and just make this be instead of a vector because all we're offsetting right now is the X position so we're going to create a translation and there are multiple overrides here we can take a vector 3 uh, we can take a vector or a float for each of the different values and since we have our offset here we'll just go ahead and use that for the x and the y and the z in this case we're not going to actually change so we'll leave those at zero if we we're doing this uh, with also the y then we need to calculate the y and it might make more sense to use a matrix and then or sorry a, a vector and then we could just subtract vector values so down in here we're going to apply our transform and now if we run this again you can see now our helicopter stays at the same spot in the screen and the rest of the screen scrolls past us. But you also noticed that at the very start of the game, half of our world or a chunk of our world is just off screen. And that's because this 
design that we're using, uh, we're just using a straight up linear action there. Now what we want to do probably is clamp that value. So we'll use offset uh, and set that equal to math helper dot clamp which takes three floating point values, the value that we want to clamp, the amount we want to clamp it to, and since our offset is 300, if we go, go ahead and add this 300 back in, we're saying, okay, it, this value we calculate for our offset needs to be at least 300 pixels so we can counter off counter this 300 pixels. So if our player happens to be too close to the edge, um, we're basically going to offset that by 300 to make sure that we're showing just the part of the world we want to show. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side of the world. So if we look at our uh, foreground and see how big of an image that is, which it is quite a large image, um, the far side is something like 13,999. So this is a very large image. Um, so 13,600, we'll say, and that should give us a pretty much most of the world will show up. Uh, so this offset, if it happens to be bigger than this, it's going to be clamped to that. If it's smaller than that, it's going to be clamped to this 300. And we can play with those values, make sure we got them where we want them. Uh, one other thing I will point out, in order to use these very large graphics, we have to set our graphics profile to high def. Uh, by default, it uses the reach profile, which was intended to be able to run on Windows Phone and other low-powered systems. So uh, we have to crank that up if we're going to use very large text. And it looks like I did not get my clamp to work quite the way I wanted to. So let's uh, make sure that we're doing that correctly. Actually, let's do it this way. Float player equals math helper dot clamp. So our player uh, position needs to be, in this case, we'll say between 300 and, what did we use for that maximum, 13, 620. And then instead of actually using the player position in this calculation, we'll use this uh, player value. Let's make it player x. Let's make this offset X. There we go. Let's try that again. And there you can see, even if we move our player off the screen now, uh, we're not going to uh, scroll so that we can see the edge of the world. But as soon as we move enough to start the world scrolling, we're going to scroll with it. So that's the basics of getting a scrolling world. And we can just sit here and scroll all the way to the end. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The next step we want to do is we actually want these different layers to scroll at different speeds. So we have three layers, a background, a midground, and a foreground. So the foreground, we want to scroll at the same speed of the player. So we're going to leave that one alone, but we want to scroll the other two uh, at different speeds, which means they need to have their own offset uh, that we use for the transformations. So we're going to have to have multiple sprite batch begin and end calls because each one of these is going to get its own transformation vector. And then we'll move our different layers into those different calls. And this will be our background. And we want to draw the background first because we want the other layers to be drawn on top of that. And I'm going to actually take this transform and move it down. And we're going to calculate the transformation matrix um, down here. And we're going to do that for each one of these, which means we don't need that definition there. So we're going to create the translation based on our offset. And we want our background to scroll at maybe um, one-third the speed of the foreground. So we'll just take this time 0.333F, uh, 
and that's going to scale that uh, value down so it's going to scroll slower. And then for the midground, we will scale that one at maybe one sixth or one third of the speed. So are two thirds of the speed, so 0.666, one third. And then this uh, last one, the foreground, we'll just scroll at the speed of the player. So no scaling at all, just at that offset value. So now we have these three layers, they should be scrolling at different speeds. And once we start getting to the point where we scroll, oh. <laughs> We're only scrolling the foreground because we forgot to include the transformation matrix in here. So transformation matrix colon transform. A transform matrix. Transform. There we go. So now if we run this we should have the three layers scrolling at different speeds and you can see that gives us a little bit of a sense of depth to our world. Now when we draw these assets, obviously the midground and the background need to be larger than the foreground in order to uh, really get this effect that we're after and that's going to be determined basically on how by how much you're scaling those layers compared to the other layers. And if we were to look at these images uh, that we're using in this particular game, so I'm just going to open this content folder, kind of show you what those look like. So our background, for example, is uh, 3,500 wide. folder, not the file. Properties. Uh, I don't know why it keeps grabbing the folder. I'm trying to grab the image. There we go. Properties and details. The last one was about 35,000. This one is about 140,000. And if you remember, our uh, and our midground is going to fall between those. So those are very large images that are stretched um, out to the, the size that we're looking for. Now obviously uh, these kind of very large bitmaps, they work fine on a, a more powerful machine, but this is not going to be uh, appropriate for every machine. They're going to take up a lot of space in video RAM. On a modern system, Often that's not a huge deal, especially if it's a gaming computer, because the amount of memory that we're consuming for this simple 2D game versus a uh, AAA uh, 3D modeled game is, is pretty small. But it is there, and it is something you need to be aware of. Uh, that's why, for example, a lot of the traditional uh, scrolling games that we've seen, you'll see in the older days, like the NES and Super NES games, actually took advantage of tile maps. And we'll talk about tile maps uh, in a future lesson. But that's really all we need to do to get up parallax scrolling. And the nice thing about this is anything we want to draw in, say, this midground layer, we just need to do it within this batch call. Anything we want to draw in the background, we just need to put it in this batch call. And anything we want in the foreground, we just need to put it in that batch call. And then we'll all have them all scrolling appropriately. And we don't need to do anything else to position them in the world. We can just go ahead and put them at the normal spot in the world and render them at that spot, and it will show up exactly where we want it to. So that's it for today. Have a good week.